I wanted to talk about some leather brake today. But I also have this old style can that has been turned into a candle from my friend Marty. And he's calling this Chicago Handshake Candle uh, because a Chicago Handshake, if you go to a bar, is when you order an old style and get some Malort, you get a shot of Malort. He made the scent of this candle supposedly smell like Malort. So we'll, uh, we'll light it up. And uh, you won't be able to smell it, but uh, I'll have a weird smell going on here. Put this right here. So how you guys doing? Can you hear me? Give me a uh, like a thumbs up in the chat if you guys can hear me. Um, and then we'll talk about some leather break, which is a term that people may not have heard. But what break is, is when a piece of leather folds in and creases. Hey, Dr. Blues, thank you very much. Uh, but break is where a toe flexes on a shoe. Lots of leathers tend to delaminate and sort of pebble up here. What's up, Max? And that's what break is. I think it's a term that not enough people uh, talk about. So we'll talk a little bit about that. I've got a bunch of different leathers and different shoes and stuff that we can look at and hopefully demonstrate what I'm talking about. But also, I know a lot of people about a week ago ordered one of these guys. And this is the Capone Money Clip. And I think most people have received theirs now that ordered on the uh, launch day. Be curious to see what you guys are thinking about here so far. I'm still loving mine. We saw some weird shipping stuff go on, and I think it was all the shipments we made the day after Thanksgiving. It's almost, it feels, we don't know the answer, like why this happened, but it feels like the post office took a huge bin full of our packages and held them and like didn't process them or something. But there's like a big batch from Black Friday that are finally moving now, we think. Um, so there's been some delays there, it's kind of stinks. But hey, Andrew, um, everybody else that's hanging out, thanks for joining me. And uh, I encourage everybody to um, ask questions about this stuff because I'm sometimes a little too close to the leather. I, I have such like an in my face um, understanding of it that I don't see like a bigger picture of what you might be interested to know about. But let's go through some of my shoes that I brought out here in three different leathers. And I've got a few different examples, but the one from the thumbnail, and I was wearing these today, this is the uh, Viberg service boot in natural shell cordovan. And I've had these for about a year now and I wear them um, I switch between these and the Grant Stone Diesel boots right now, and I love both of them. Um, I should do a longer video about how I'm enjoying this guy, but I, I like it more and more each time I wear it. At first, the Viber was like just way too firm, um, but it seems like I finally hit a spot that makes it equally comfortable to just about everything else that I have. So I'm really digging these, but this is relevant because they're the only shell pair of anything that I have right now. And it's the best way for me to show uh, like a perfect break. This, there's no pebbling at all to the shell cordovan. And that's a really unique thing to the cordovan, which is why I wanna show you this. So that's, that is as good as you'll ever get it. So there's no pebbling, no creasing, nothing at all going there. And you'll have this same look forever. Now, I also have these indie boots and these are in chrome excel and i've worn these for i mean they're really beat up like I've, I've worn these for a long time and they have a bit of a of a more apparent break and these have shoe trees in it right now so somebody's gonna be happy that i'm actually doing that for once <clears throat> but let me show you the break on these because the chrome excel break is inconsistent and it tends to uh, spread this crease look uh, if it starts off a little creased in general. This is sort of like in the acceptable range, but it's starting to get a little bit more coarse. So you can see where I flex it right there, where my toe is going to flex the rest of the boot, we're starting to get this pebbling and delamination. And again, like this one's not the best, but it's also, I wouldn't consider this a loose break. It's not super tight like a calfskin or like the shell. But the reason that this is happening is um, a pretty interesting thing. 
So let me pull out an actual piece of Chrome Excel here. And I pull, I cut this piece from the absolute loosest part of the hide that I had downstairs. This is a piece of natural Chrome Excel cut from the belly. In fact, it's cut from like where the leg meets the belly. It's like a um, pocket that we would call it in the skin. So it's if I were to pull this, which I will, it should stretch quite a bit because there's a lot of less density of the fiber network in the cross section of this leather down in that section. So when I pull this, it should stretch <laughs> quite a bit. And you can see the displacement of the color there happening because I pulled it. There's just less, less, um, less of a tight knit structure of the fibers in the pockets of the animal. It tends to be like on the armpits of the animal and the bellies of the animal. The fiber network tends to be much less tight. So what's happening when you see that pebbling, like, like you see here, if I were to fold this in on itself and pretend like it was a shoe, the creasing that happens here, what's happening is the grain layer of the chromic cell is delaminating from the fibers underneath. So if you were to look at the cross section here, which it might not, <laughs> it might not actually show, but there is about two millimeters of thickness here. Most of this thickness is just a bunch of fibers and there's a the very thin grain layer on top. So I might be able to demonstrate this if I get an edge here and get it to pebble up. You can actually see the grain start to separate and delaminate from those fibers below. And I might not be able to get it here. Be better to do on a thicker piece next time. But that's, that's what is happening here. You're getting a grain layer separation from the leather below, and that's what the pebbling is. So because we know that there are looser sections like this in the belly of an animal or in a pocket of the animal, you're probably not gonna wanna cut like a toe or anywhere that's going to crease out of that leather. So you wanna cut it from the backbone. There's actually a, a section on the hide that's called the bend. And the bend is sort of like like if you were to imagine a side of leather to look like the shape of the United States of America, it would be sort of like from Arizona up, like you would cut out all the South and it would be like from Ohio to um, Washington, like that, that rectangle of a shape is the tightest area in the hide and closer to the backbone, it tends to be a little tighter. So shoemaker, which you, you may or may not be, you're gonna wanna cut the toes in that section. So I also have another Chrome Excel piece here. These tend to, this one is also very old. This is a Converse from Dr. Dre. I brought this out because I saw that Converse is doing another line of stuff in like sneakers from Horween that looked really neat. Like, and I really thought this was cool where they did the color eight Chrome Excel with the black Chrome Excel. I thought that was really cool. The other um, shoe I should have brought out has like a really terrible break on the toe here and here. This one is really tight. So Chrome Excel varies quite a bit. Uh, I show you the indie boots. These are a little looser. It's not like a full reject, but that's could be tighter. This one is much tighter. And then I have a Grant Stone pair here of long wings that I find to be super tight. And I haven't really worn these very much. You can tell they're pretty new-ish, but that's like a really tight break. You can see there's not much delamination going on, not much of that piping sort of pebbling look. And that's kind of what you want. And I'm, I commented on somebody's video um, where they were talking about some Grant Stone stuff. And I think the biggest testament to Grant Stone's quality is, I mean, I, don't, I only own two pairs of Grant Stone, but the uh, leather that they're choosing to cut for this section is super tight. I also have some Allen Edmonds here in a leather called Dublin. And these are the Ridgeways from them. I don't know, they did this a while ago. Uh, and I think this was the first time, I ordered these because it was the first time that Allen Edmonds was using Dublin on any of their stuff. And I thought this is super cool. What's up, Richard? And by the way, anybody that's chatting here, I'm sorry I missed you. Um, Scarborough. Love my indie boots and cigar shell. My business partner, Dan, 
that's the same pair and he really likes those. I got um, my my Vibergs at the same time that Dan got his. Uh, Chew3Y07 says, happy holidays, Phil. Your customer service is the best. Thank you for sending the personalized videos. They mean a lot. Nobody takes a minute to thank their customers. You, hey, thank you so much. And um, I really appreciate that. It means a lot. And I, I owe a lot of people videos right now. We just had the holidays. Um, so there's a lot of thank you videos for me to make. I'll probably do some of those over the weekend. Um, it's, uh, it's getting a little cumbersome now. Uh, now that we've become a little bit more recognized and people are picking up more of our stuff. Um, I do need to dedicate more time to do that. I think I'm about like 13 days behind. So if you ordered 13 days ago, I'll probably be sending you a thank you video this weekend. Hey, Fernando. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Check it out. Is this conversation about the leather break interesting to you at all? I find it to be uh, not talked about enough. People don't tend to talk about that in their leather selections, um, but I think it makes or literally, literally breaks a shoe. Um, I think you can ruin a shoe by just making it really junky and loose. And I think these indie boots are starting to get kind of close to that. Um, this is where I would suggest they put the loose stuff, but I really beat these shoes up. Like I slip these on and don't really care. So I'm probably not doing it many favors by like folding it this way. Um, having said that, like that could be smoother, that could be tighter. These are some of my favorite shoes that I own. So I really like these indie boots. Uh, I also have, I should talk about these Ridgeways a little bit more. So this is the first leather that Alan Edmonds, or first time Alan Edmonds ever did the Dublin on a shoe. And in the photo, in their thumbnails, this orange uh, and the orange laces did not look orange. We thought they were more of like a, a complimentary tan. So Skip Horween and I bought these um, and uh, didn't, we're kind of surprised when it was super orange when we got them. So I haven't been able to wear these as much as I would have liked, but take a look at the piping sort of like, or lack thereof on the Dublin. I've seen some harder wearing boots made out of Dublin, um, like in Vibergs and stuff. And they don't tend to be as tight as this right here. A little bit of a finer look with the creasing there. I think the reason for that is, I can't, I'm speculating because I don't own a pair of those. The other thing to think about is when you're lining a shoe or a boot, the lining leather cannot be firmer than the outer leather because it will, you'll still, you'll have that same sort of delamination happening um, just on a different sort of scheme. Um, like if there's something firm underneath something soft and you flex it, it's going to really rip apart that upper layer. So there's sort of like a play between the softness of the liner and the firmness or, or softness of the upper. And I don't know if that's why these aren't, aren't having a junky break. I think that's a really good break. It's not like a calfskin break. I'd say this is a, what we would call is a little bit more sugary. See how it looks a little sparkly, kind of like, um, like if you were to pour out a bunch of sugar on it, that's what we call a sugary break. And I have another leather here to talk about that, which we'll get into. Uh, and the other shoe I want to mention, these are thousand mile boots and I love thousand mile boots. I've had these for maybe 10 years and I wear this, I've worn this a lot. I haven't worn them in a while. These are starting to get a little worn down too, but the Chrome XL will do that a little bit. I'd say it's kind of a negative. It tends to be a little looser, but if you get a really tight break on some Chrome Excel, it's like the best shoe around, but it really depends on the maker. Like that's not so bad. It's not the greatest either. Um, actually on the toe here, that's like super loose. So they probably cut this from a belly. In fact, on, on the other side of it, you can see how loose all these fibers are in here. They're not like super tight together. Um, I don't really have a good example of that. Let me read your comments here. Billy says, just got my jar on the Fox with the bugs around on the way. Smell and quality is amazing. Thanks, Billy. Can't wait for you to have it. Uh, what jar of the Fox and bugs Moran did you pick up? And Richard, good to see you, Richard. Sorry about the uh, import uh, fees there, man. Um, but Richard says, I'd say the videos may need to go. My friend, it's, uh, it's not an ignorant thing. 
if you did stop them, if your popularity is such to take so much time for videos moves you away from the wallets. That actually happened today. I wanted to do a live stream with all of the orders that were gonna go out and like say this one is for Richard and, and this one's for Billy. I wanted to show you that in this video and we ran out of time today. Uh, so yeah, we're kind of, with the holidays, things are kind of cranking around here. Uh, Chewy says, yes, it's awesome how you go into detail leather since nobody else goes into detail about the leathers. It shows you have a passion for the leather and your products. Thank you so much, Chewy. And I think that's my um, thing to try to give to the world is I didn't know anything about leather before I worked at the tannery. I thought leather was just like a brown thing and it was one type and that's it. But as it turns out, there's so many different ways to tan a hide and then um, re-tan it and to finish it. And I think there are many marketing terms that try to simplify things down to have people uh, buy their products. But it turns into this weird morass of like wrong terminology or like misleading terminology like top grain. And that's something we can get into. But words like top grain don't describe much of anything to me. It's, it's sort of like, it sounds positive because it has the word top, but that doesn't really mean much. So part of what I'm trying to share with people is some of the stuff that I've learned over the years about these different things that you can observe in the leather. Um, there's a video I did earlier this year called Leather Appreciation 101. And I thought it could be better, I could do more. But that was a, a good way of, of how I assess a leather when I see it. I talk about things like the feel, like how does it feel in your hand? How does it feel on the surface? You know, is it sticky? Is it super silky? Is it smooth? Is it rough? Does it feel like a suede? And then there's the look, like is it bright? Is it dull? Uh, is it somewhere in between, like a mild luster? Uh, there's thickness. Uh, and then the break is another really interesting thing. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, and it's break is not so relevant on something like a wallet because you're never really flexing your wallet backwards. Although on the, um, on the Capone, this, this section here would be considered like somewhere that, that would break, but you're not going to experience it unless you were to fold this thing like all the way the wrong way. Um, so that be, could become relevant, but if you got one of these Capones, check the break because we cut tight spots on our all our wallets, even though we know they're not gonna fold backwards like that. Let me show you another piece of leather here that I think is really special. So um, this is something called a horsehide strip. And I was talking about how they look like mustaches. So on this piece, this is sort of cut from like the waist of an animal where my chin is right now would be the waist. And then underneath here and here, these are where the cordon go. These little oval, there would be like a big oval shell right there. Let me show you what a shell looks like. This is a huge shell. So this is one butt cheek of a horse. And this happens to be the piece of shell. Uh, above here, above this, is sort of where that mustache goes. And they, they are tanned together in a pit. And this is what it looks like. So we call these, or Horwing calls these uh, russet horseside strips or veg strips. Uh, I had this one made, uh, Skip helped me out with this a few years ago, because I always liked the way that the veg strips age and darken. You can find gun holsters out of this leather from crossbreed holsters, and there's this finish a little differently. It's not as bright and shiny as this, but you can find gun holsters from crossbreed out of this and they look awesome. And they mold, the reason that they use this is because veg tan leathers mold around anything you put inside of them. So if you were to take a gun blank and put it in here, get the leather wet and then let it dry around that blank, it will mold to that shape. So that's why people like the veg stuff for gun holsters. But I always liked seeing how they wore in an age. I thought it was super cool. But the problem with the strips is usually they're super hard. And like, it wouldn't flop over like this. It would just be like a board, like a piece of cardboard. So that was one challenge. There's two other challenges. So it's too firm, too thick and inconsistently yeah. so, but also the selection. So if you can see closely on here, I'm not sure how well this camera will do it justice, but there are a ton of healed scars and scratches on this hide. It's just super scarred up. 
So this would be a pretty rugged looking wallet. But what Skip did for me was he solved two of the issues, which is the thickness part and the softness part. Um, he made it softer so I can do this now. It's not like a, a board, but also it's the wallet weight that we like. It's about four ounces thick, which is just about right for most everything we make. Uh, but the, the other, we <laughs> came back to the topic uh, for break. This one has a super, super sugary break. Um, which is because it's so bright and shiny, you tend to get a little bit more of that sugary look like we saw on these. That sugary look right here kind of looks like spaced out little dots of, of brightness. You tend to get that look on the break of this as well. And you can see it pretty well right there. See how it's like kind of textured, but like very fine. This is also a, a sugary break is kind of also known as a finish break. If you press the finish too hard on top of the leather, that finish will actually delaminate and you kind of get this look. And you see it a lot on some, I guess I won't throw anything under the bus, but you can see that a lot on leathers that are a little heavily finished and then like sort of overplated and pressed down a little too hard, a little iron smooth, a little too hard. Hopefully that makes sense. But I love this leather. I can't get seem to get skipped to make more of it, but I want to do more stuff out of this. But again, the other problem that we can't solve is all those scars. It's um, it's pretty rough. And most times you want to cut around that. I think this might be unavoidable. You can see like there's just scars everywhere on this guy. So that might be unavoidable. And before we get to the shell here, let's take a look. I think I saw some comments. Um, Max Power says, does wax flush Chromexcel also tend to do this? That's a really interesting question, Max. Okay, so I have this piece of Chrome Excel. When we make wallets and stuff out of it, we actually finish off the flush side with a little bit of resin and we iron that smooth. You will see delamination on this as well, but you're seeing the delamination of the resin coat that's been sort of like laminated onto the surface. You see that to start, start to separate. So if I try to make that happen, let's see. So. You can kind of do this on most leathers to like give it a tumbled, uh, it, it'd be like the same action that this leather would have in a tumbling mill. You can kind of get that same look by doing this a little bit and we'll see if we can get it to break up. So here's just after a couple, I'm not doing too much just yet. And this, this tumbling is also how people will make suede with like a really nice nap. Uh, they'll tumble the crap out of a suede and it will just feel more and more velvety and suedey. Uh, I can't get this one to break super hard, but I am seeing it break a little bit. I've definitely seen like um, like a sort of pipey break on some wax flesh before. It depends again on like, if this leather was super firm and you tumbled it, it's gonna crack up and break like that. I, I would say most wax flash is, is tighter looking and like smoother looking because there is no grain layer. Like look after I tumbled that, it's just like super broken up and tumbled looking everywhere. It actually looks kind of awesome. Um, but I don't think you'll really see that too much on the flash side. So that's a really good question. And Billy says Amaretto, my favorite shell color. Richard says, the Capone is easily one of the best wallets I own. That Western shell is incredible. Did you get the review I did on the website? You know what, Richard? I, I probably did. Um, I've got a pro an issue with my um, my review thing. So, like, on, a, on any website, uh, any website that sells stuff, all the reviews that they generate are authenticated by a third party. So, we use a company called reviews.io that helps us to collect those reviews. And I guess whatever um, pricing plan I was with them, it has like a limit of reviews. So I think it was like, hey, you only get 500 reviews a month. And then after that, we don't send anything off. So what happens at the beginning of the month, which is like right now, I get a full inbox of like 500 reviews and then they stop. And so like I have, 500 emails right now to look at. I bet yours is in there. I'm sure it is. Uh, and now that you've said something, I'm gonna take a look for it. Uh, somebody else said something here too. Ed. Hey Adam, glad that you can make it. 
and it's good to see you too. I hope that you're staying well. Uh, Max says, I was into that Western natural glaze combo. Richard actually picked up one of those. He was one of the two people that got one of those special wallets. And we actually made, I, I think we shipped out another one today. Somebody like, had one special ordered. In fact, I'm seeing a, another really cool Capone. I think, yeah, I'm not even on that one. So we just finished up another uh, special Capone today. This is super cool. Um, I don't even know how best to show you this, but this is a marbled ultraviolet. That is sweet. And wait till you see the inside. So marble ultraviolet can be a little bit more dramatic than this with like more sort of like tan undertones with that sort of like purple uh, and like light magenta with it from time to time. That's awesome looking. This one is a little bit more subtle and I think it's super cool. I think we have a one shot card case in something like this right now. I called it mottled um, ultraviolet, I think, because it doesn't look like like most of the marbled stuff. I just couldn't come up with a better word for it. It's technically cut from the same piece. It's just a little bit different looking, but look at this. So I really like the reverse side of all the ultraviolets. And it kind of has like all these random die marks. This one is like covered in it. And then this has intense blue or denim. This looks like intense blue on the inside. That's a really cool Capone. So <laughs> Ed, Ed's trying to uh, get the algorithm to work. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Uh, I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Like getting getting people to pay attention to this would be great i'm more doing it for um to share some of the, the leather knowledge so yeah if you think if you think you know somebody that wants to learn more about you know what this creasing is on a shoe and you think they get some value out of this chat you can send them here but i should probably do like um, a little bit better video that's not live describing some of these things um, because you'd be able to see it in a little bit higher quality uh, the break is probably something that doesn't translate properly on the webcam. <laughs> so I probably have to get the, uh, the DSLR going for that. Um, oh, Chris. Chris, good news, bad news. Um, we made your wallet wrong and I noticed it last night. We didn't flip the color four on the exterior. Uh, we, we had Nat, we had whisk. Actually, let me show your wallet. The one we messed up. Chris, 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 Chris. All right, Chris, I'm gonna show you the, the correct part first. Uh, and this is what you wanted on the inside. So we got this this right, but I don't think I properly translated um, what we should do for the outside to my team. So we didn't put the color four on top of whiskey on the outside, it's, it's all whiskey. But I got another one that we're starting, so you should have that soon. Um, but I like this combo a lot. And we still have to polish it up and stuff. This this one I, I'm not going to send you because um, it's not what you asked for. But I um, just want to show you how cool I thought this looks. And I like this a lot where you have the reverse that's going to touch the shell side. So when that rubs, you're not going to get weird scuffs. And this will be a little bit easier to fill in and polish in. So I think it's a good choice. And uh, hang in there. I think we should be able to ship it like early next week. Um, but hey, thanks, thanks for waiting. I know it's been a little bit, uh, it's probably been about four weeks, Chris. I, I forget how long it's been. Um, hey, Billy, thank you for leaving a review. Um, uh, A-O-D-H-A-N says, does anyone know why all the wallets are named after monsters? Uh, mobsters. I know why, because I chose to do that. Um, I, when I was starting the company, um, my friend was, was talking to me about it and he said, well, like, what do people think about when they think about Chicago? And, and I said, well, I don't know, pizza. <laughs> and he figured that that wasn't good enough. And he said, you know, what I think about is like Chicago mobsters. And I said, well, that's kind of interesting. And we just started looking at, um, different names. So fat Herbie seemed like a really perfect name for this guy because it's bigger than most wallets. 
And I was like, man, that seems like a great idea. I'd just give it a little bit of an identity by putting a name to it. So we did the Fat Herbie. We had the Tony the Ant, Johnny the Fox. We have Bugs and Moran. And now we have the Capone, which uh, this one's still super striking. Um, so I named it after that because I thought it would be a nice way to give this wallet an identity instead of just calling it like the double bifold. It's like kind of boring. And this one could have just been called the money clip. I mean, that's like kind of boring. Shouldn't even have your pizza. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do like pizza around these parts. Uh, all right. So TJ says, I got a reverse ultraviolet watch strap from you. I absolutely love the patina on it. It's darkened so much, but still has a purple undertone. Thanks for, thank you for uh, saying that TJ. I'm glad that you like it. That's the thing I notice about some of the, even like the more vibrant shells, uh, even the more vibrant shells tend to keep some of that vibrance, but they don't look remotely the same. Like uh, I like Amaretto a lot and I wear my stuff pretty hard. So when the Amaretto wears in, it looks way, way darker, way darker, like brown. It actually almost looks like this. But on this section here, like the spine where you flex it, some of those undertones, those original Amaretto undertones come back to life. And I think that's, that's a cool thing. And I'm glad to see that you're having that happen on your watch band. Um, but let's get back to the break thing here. Uh, and we're almost done. The only last thing to show you is this shell and how the shell cordovan breaks. So I show you the shoe, the boot here. And that's, that's as good as it gets because there is no grain layer to separate and delaminate from the rest of the fibers in this piece of leather. Um, so that's why you don't see any creasing on the shell. There's nothing to separate, which is what makes shell special, which is why people put five different pairs of soles or five different soles on their boots and wear them for 40, 50, 60 years. They're wearing their grandfather's shoes. And this is what a piece of shell looks like. And this happens to be like one of the biggest shells that I've seen. It's pretty big. Uh, and you can do that sort of like, the way that I check for break is I'll cut my hand like this underneath the leather and sort of hold it like that. And you can kind of like karate chop it in there. So any leather crafter that's here and you want to make something that's gonna have a super tight break and you wanna check for it first, do the little cup, karate chop, and and sort of look inside of there. So you can see there is uh, pretty tight and smooth. Like you're never gonna see that crease. And that's again, because there is no, there's nothing to separate and there's nothing to delaminate on a piece of shell cordovan because there's no grain. It's technically just a piece of shell, just like a thick um, membrane. Uh, I saw a couple questions here. CJ says, do you work for Horween then? Also, where can I find uh, find some for projects? I I used to work for Horween for a little over 14 years and I, I stopped working there last fall. So it's been a little bit over a year since I've worked for them. Um, and it's, it, it's uh, we, last time I did a live chat, we talked about this a little bit, so I won't go too deep on it, but it's sort of a bittersweet thing because I love I love the leather. I love the tannery. I love the family over there. I saw Skip today. I was talking to Nick today. I, I mean, we're still good friends, so it's a little bittersweet for me to not be able to see them uh, and have lunch with them like every day. That was a dream. Um, but, you know, I've got a real opportunity here with Ashlyn to uh, do a little bit of a different uh, functional role at work and be able to share this with you guys. And I think that also helps my friends at Horween. I think more knowledge about the material is going to be better because I think the people that are here right now, there's 30 people here that have the capacity to take the time and really think about what they're looking at. Uh, I think the more people that do that, the more leather Horween is going to sell because it's so much better and it's obviously better. Um, and that's not to say that the, there's not other good leathers, but uh, I think just in general, I want people to understand more about the material and like what to look for so they can make a good choice and you know have a pair of fiber natural shell boots that last them the rest of their lives and I think that's kind of what it's all about uh, and so I have an opportunity to do that here at Ashland while making wallets and 
we do all sorts of cool other good stuff <laughs> and I really enjoy it. Uh, somebody else said something here. Uh, and where can you find some for projects? There's two places that I like to suggest to buy Horween leather. I would say there's no, there's no better or worse. The one that is sort of like the tannery direct ish, it's not direct, but there's a company called the tannery row and they have a nice little website where you can buy stuff from them. And the way that tannery row works is you can sort of, it's expensive, but you can sort of semi custom specific colors if you want it. And they have some limitations, I believe on quantities. But essentially, they're like a little bit of a custom shop for Horween. It's super expensive. Uh, they also do some stock stuff. Like they have, uh, they have bed strips. Not like this exact one. This is like, we made really shiny. We glazed this uh, in the same way that the Cordovan is glazed. We ran this through like a, a glass uh, rod and like super polished it. Um, but you can buy like a raw strip from Tannery Row. And they sell them in different thicknesses. The raw strips are very rugged with all those scars. So it's kind of tough to work with. Um, the other place that you, I highly recommend checking out, and I really like them, is Maverick Leather. They What they do is they have a relationship with Horween where they buy off the low grades from Horween. And the low grades from Horween, for somebody like me, are great. Like if I'm not making a shoe or I don't have like very large pieces, you can kind of buy some of those low grades from Horween and they and cut around some of the imperfections. You can make some really good product and the price for Maverick is much less. I like them a lot too. We also buy, we buy some hardware uh, and some other things from the Buckle guy. They resell Horween stuff with like a more focused, narrow option. You might want to check out Buckle guy. I know that Rocky Mountain sell some leather we buy we've bought some tools from them and i like their stuff a lot there's a lot of places that you can buy stuff from it's really it's going to be really hard to find shell um because like the shell that i'm cutting today i ordered two years ago and you know we've we have a special relationship with them and they they're not really taking on the tannery doesn't really take on more customers because they can't fill enough of their current customers for that material so it's gonna be tough to get they can only make so much, it takes six months to make. It's kind of a, a tough, tough leather to get. There are other Cordovan tanneries in the world. I don't think they really compare, but you can get it. it you can get like 80% of the way there maybe. There's some nice shell that you can get elsewhere. What burnishing compounds techniques do I use? We use, um, like on this, it's got a nice sheen to it. So on something like this, what we do is we sand it down. And if there are any like mushrooming sections on the, um, the corners, we'll bevel that down and sort of give it a nice rounded, um, rounded look. So it doesn't have like this like mushrooming out thing on the corners. We'll cut all that off. And then we, uh, sorry, we sand it, we bevel it, and then we put some tolkanol on, or you can use gum trag. And we, then we put some wax on and then we put more tokenol. We like tokenol because we've noticed that the tokenol is more easily removed if you get some tokenol on something like the shell. Like this is a super expensive piece of shell. And if I accidentally got some edge um, material on there, it's, it's really hard to get off the gum track, but quite easy or much easier to get off the tokenol. Uh, and then we just like hand burnish all of it with a canvas. Uh, also after waxing it, we'll run it through like a, a burnishing wheel and we burnish it down and then we hand wax it or hand um, burnish the tokenol. Um, and then for the shells itself, we use a polish called Saphir Cordovan Cream, which is awesome. I really like that. Having said that, so we, we polish every piece of shell with the Saphir Cordovan Cream before we, we should send it out. Having said that, this boot, all I've ever done to this was brush it. And one time I brushed it with some water and it really upgraded it. So you can, you can get a pretty long way with just a little bit of water and friction on the veg stuff in particular. Um, I tend to like a little bit more beat up look than like a super finishy look 
which is why all my stuff is like it might look not cared for but i love these i just want to wear them and beat them up and um, enjoy it some people really enjoy like the process of polishing and i don't think that's wrong i think that's great any way you can enjoy it you should um so hopefully that helps we've also uh we also have to self-promote here a little bit we have a product called tanner's blend and i find that to be really good like these boots here sometimes your boots will just get super dirty or perhaps it'll look a little bit lifeless what i suggest doing is washing them with soap and water and i just use regular dish soap um, but there are particular products um, that you can use to wash them. I don't find it makes a big difference. What's up, Austin? I got a COVID test today. <laughs> um, but the product that we use, the problem with washing a leather with soap is it's kind of like, like my hands are super dried out right now because I've been putting a lot of alcohol on my hands to like keep them clean. It's the same idea with the leather. You you kind of suck out all the fats and oils and waxes and greases that were tanned into this leather when you apply soap to it. So it's really important to nourish the fibers in the leather in the same way that you would lotion your hands. So then you get all chalky and dried out. And we have a product that was made just for us by the tanner from Horween, uh, Chris Kolblinger. He made a product called Tanner's Blend that we sell and it's really good for conditioning and nourishing all the leather after you've washed it. So I also find it works perfectly on Chrome Excel. I think it's perfect for Chrome Excel. So hopefully that helps. Um, uh, will the, okay, Max Power says, will the shell cordovan eventually break down? If so, how, what's the life expectancy of uh, given adequate care? That's a, um, that's a tough question. I'm going to, I'm just going to say, I don't know, but here are some anecdotal bits of information I can give you. Uh, in my years of working at Horween, I've had a lot of conversations with people that have used shell cordovan. Mostly they're like old floor shines and sort of long wings, um, in the style of this made in the shell. And I can't tell you the amount of times that I've had people come to me and say, these were my grandfather's shoes. He wore them in the 50s, and I'm wearing them today. So the, the cordovan has an ability to keep, like all the leather is going to last, but the cordovan has this unique ability to never crease. So you always have this look on the toe. You're never going to see any separation and delamination on a pair of shell um, because it's a unique leather that doesn't have any of that pebbling or any delamination that happens. So the bottom line is all you really need to do is change out the thing that's gonna wear away, which is the sole, and you should be good. I mean, it's hard for me to say how long because uh, they've been making this leather since 1905. I don't think, I've literally never seen one that has failed. I suppose it's possible. Um, I had, haven't seen it. Having said that, I also haven't seen like a Chrome Excel pair that had failed. The Chrome Excel does get a little bit more worn in. Like this looks like an antique now, just because of how many times this has been flexed. You're gonna get this look the more you wear it. I think you, you'll be able to break down and, and sort of loosen those fibers more and more and more, but they're gonna last. Like they're not just gonna crumble apart. And, and given adequate care, that's things like nourishing it. Like don't let this sit in the sun for a year and dry out. Uh, I think if you condition it, you know, every other year or something, you'd be fine. So that was a re that's a really good question. I don't necessarily know the answer. Um, AOD HAN says, if you're buying Horween in small amounts of Recommend Maverick, I recommend Maverick too. Uh, Tremaine says, hey, what's up, Tremaine? And Austin's here. So that's kind of like all I wanted to go over. <laughs> the leather break. And let me try to summarize it here. When you're buying a pair of shoes, it might be valuable to take a look at some people that have worn those shoes before. What's up, Justin? Uh, take a look online and like, let's say you're gonna buy some uh, thousand mile boots. Well, just Google search thousand mile boots and see how they look after a while. And if you like this section here, this is the part to look for, I would say. If you kind of like how the whole thing looks, you should buy it. 
But the part that breaks in a little bit more is this section here where your toe is going to flex. And that's the part of the leather that we call the break. Shell cordovan never creases. It's considered to be a better look with a tighter break. So like these Grant Stones have a very tight break. Having said that, haven't worn these very much. You can tell they're pretty new. Tight break tends to be better. I don't have any calf skin here. Calf skin tends to have a tighter break. I've seen some junky breaks on Dublin. This is a Dublin shoe that has a break that's pretty tight. It's actually super tight, but it's what I would call a sugary break. It looks like little bits of crackly like sugar on it. And here's a better example of what a sugary break looks like. If I were to fold this in on itself. See how it kind of has like a, it's also known as a finish break, this section in here. See how that start, starts to look a little sugary? That's, I don't love that look as much. I mean, it's not as bad as like a super loose break. And here's as bad as it gets. I cut this from a, uh, a loose pocket and a piece of Chrome Excel. That's a, pr I mean, it looks cool now that I intentionally tumbled it. But if you see your break on your shoe start to pebble and crease like that, um, probably not the best. I typically suggest to people, if you're not buying seconds, to talk to the manufacturer to, and show them a photo of the break that you're seeing on your shoe and ask them if it's normal. So if, if that's something that's normal to them, that, that might not be great. Uh, most places, if they, if they send you, they shouldn't be sending you a shoe that like super junks up like that. Um, so I probably wouldn't buy from them if they say that's normal. Um, but it's important um, to hold people accountable. Like if I send you a wallet that falls apart, I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me that I messed up because I, I don't want you to have a bad product. And I'd assume it would be the same way for any reasonable company. Like they don't want you to have a bad shoe and sometimes they miss stuff. So it's important to uh, pay attention to that. Well, <laughs> how about that rant? Uh, TJ, it's good to know I'm not weird for my love of leather. Yeah, you should uh, work at a tannery. <laughs> Uh, John says, happy Friday, Phil. Still waiting on my color for, for Tony. Can't wait. Uh, should be tomorrow. All right, cool. Uh, AOD HAN says, being a small maker, I can't get Horween Shell. What Shell Cordovan would you recommend? I I like the uh, Merriam and the Shinky, I thought were the, the, the closest. The thing that I look for in the Shell uh, and all the Horween stuff, it, it's it's personal, right? So like, if you like it, it's good. And uh, I I probably again like a little too close to the Horween stuff. The thing that I observed that the Horween stuff has that the others don't is a really like um, really rich feel. So some of the other shells that I was feeling were very boardy. Um, this the Horween stuff just has like this really great like roundness to it. And it's so hard to describe. Like if you were to hear to feel this, uh, it would be a lot easier for me to demonstrate. But what this leather wants to do is sort of snap back to your hand. I don't know if you can see that. So it's soft and firm at the same time. It's really interesting. But the Horween stuff just has like a more rich, luxurious feel. It tends to look a little bit more naturally finished. This is a black shell, so it's not a great example. But the other shells, you, it's almost like you can see finish on some of them. And to me, that is like kind of lame. Like it, I don't want to see finish. I just want to see shell. Um, and some of them are finished so heavily, you actually see a finish break where you actually see some delamination happening because that finish is starting to like pebble off. Um, but having said that, I think Miriam is pretty good. Uh, and I thought that... Um, the Shinky stuff was pretty good too. Oh. Sam says, do horse hides, horse butts break differently than Chrome Excel calf, more like shell? That's a really good question, Sam. So that's a tough, that's also a tough question. So when you're talking about which animal's skin produces a better result, the, the answer would depend on what tannage that you're going to make that leather in. Because I can take uh, a horse hide and I can make that into Chrome Excel, or I can take a, a goat hide and I can make that into, into a Chrome Excel. 
it's it's a little hard for me to answer, but let me let me try to answer it in a different way. So this is a horsehide strip. And horsehide strips are veg tanned. This one is very soft. Usually they're like very, very hard, super rock hard, like a piece of cardboard. Uh, and that's just because they're veg tanned and they're not softened on purpose. You can order them softened from Horween. A firmer leather, in fact, if you took a piece of cardboard and, and folded it backwards in on itself like this, you would see it start to delaminate and pebble up. Uh, and I've done that on cardboard boxes here by accident. Um, you'd get that same thing, like if you were to fold any super firm veg, you'd get a junky break. This one happens to have a very tight break, but it's sugary. And that's because it was intentionally made to be a little softer. So generally speaking, a veg tends to have a looser break. Depends on the leather because again, here's another veg that has a tight break. So it's a little hard to say. The, the shell quarterman is the ultimate. You'll never see any creasing on shell. So that's one um, confirmed thing is you're never gonna see creasing on shell. But the other stuff, it really depends. It depends on, on the uh, tannage and how soft, how firm it is, where in the hide that you're cutting it from. Like this piece was cut from the belly of the animal, like back by the hind uh, leg. And it's super loose in that area. Like wherever the animal's flexing a lot, this section here tends to be super loose and fibrous. And you're gonna get this look. So it depends on a lot of factors. I'm sorry for not giving you a super clear answer there, but it, the answer is it depends. Um, but good question, Sam. Richard says, I've got Italian shell in a wallet, but still prefer for the Horween over it. Richard, I'd love to hear, wh what do you see in the Horween versus the Italian shell that's different to you? I'd imagine the Italian one is firmer, and I, I imagine it looks a little bit more finished and, and kind of fake-ish. Not, not in a bad way, kind of like the way this looks, but it looks like a little more flat and even. Uh, uh, Kicker Red says, thoughts on Venetian shoe cream? for l and and Shell Dalton boots. Well, um, interesting that you should bring up the Venetian cream because I was talking to Nick Horry today. He's working on some packaging for his own uh, Venetian cream that he's gonna be letting me sell. Um, so hopefully we'll have that soon. I like the Venetian cream. Every piece of Shell Cordovan that Horween makes gets a an application of Venetian cream and then they glaze it and they've liked that for you know 100 years there was a time where skip did some trials with the tanner's blend and glazed that i think he actually liked that more but he was scared to make a change so venetian cream is great it's kind of in between for me the venetian cream is in between a conditioner and a polish i think it has enough wax to give a nice fill and a little bit of like a brighter luster it's more subtle of a luster when you compare it to something like the saphir cordovan cream which i think is more fill and brighter uh, but the Saphir doesn't seem to like nourish as well. It sort of sits up on top a little bit more than the Venetian, which kind of dives in and penetrates through the leather a little bit better. People don't like the Venetian cream because it smells like turpentine. I like it. It doesn't really bother me. Some people that like really upsets them. Um, on your Dalton boots, I highly recommend, I sell it. You should buy it from me and I have 10% off right now. I sell, I sell some beer cordovan cream. If you haven't tried that on your Daltons, you're gonna really like it. I, that's all I would use on Shell, personally. And we that's what we do. In our shop, we use that on every wallet that we ship out, every Shell wallet, we finish with the, uh, the cordovan cream. A long answer. Uh, John says, might be looking into getting a pair of Shell cordovan boots. Any brand recommendations on any Chukka style other than Alden? God, you said Alden. I was going to say Alden. Um, I don't know who's making any shell chuckas right now. I mean, if, if you get... So, it's actually... you might Somebody's going to be mad at me for saying this. If this was a chucka, I don't know if I could recommend it. I had a tough experience with this Viberg. Because the break in time was so brutal. Like, it really kind of hurt here but if you have it in you to stick it out these are top top three most comfortable now um i don't know if they make a chukka if fiber does it i would imagine a chukka would be more comfortable than this 
but Alden's probably the only thing that comes to mind for me right now on a shell chucka. Maybe Rancourt does one. I think they only do like a Blake boot. I'm not sure who does that. I'm sorry. Um, I should look into that because I don't even own any chuckas. I think I should get some. Uh, I saw a lot on Etsy of vegetable tan ostrich leather. Have you used this or other exotic leathers besides shell? I have. Ostrich leather has these like goose pimples that are funky looking. When I see ostrich leather, I think of like cowboy boots and I think of like a really heavily finished one. I kind of don't love it. The The coolest uh, exotic that I've used, I've, I liked kangaroo. I don't know if that's considered an exotic. I thought that the veg kangaroo that I had once was pretty cool. Um, the coolest exotic though that I used was stingray. And they have like this jewel in the the top of the, the skin that's really intense, but it's super, it's, the stingray is like really fragile feeling. Maybe it's that particular tannage, uh, but it's also super thin. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if that helps, but exotics are cool. We, we kind of, I mean, I love Horween, which is located two blocks behind me here. Uh, so I kind of have a hard time not using the Horween stuff. Hey, Javier, good to see you, man. Uh, Javier says, hey, Phil, Will you offer black money clips for the Capones the same way you do on the Apple Watch bands? The tan Dublin pair is great with the black clips. That's funny. That's, you know, for the prototype I was wearing, I actually have this black clip. Um, the hardware is pretty expensive. Of course I can do it. And uh, I can link you to like where, where you can buy one. Um, I, my thought process for offering the silver clip was more of to get the price point down as far as I could to offer this at a very reasonable cost. So we did all, I, I purposely did all of them with that uh, nickel plated solid brass. That's like kind of a chrome look. So I purposely did that. I like black a lot. I usually, today I'm wearing a white shirt for some reason, but usually I wear black like everything. Um, I always have liked how black and tan go together. So that's why I did this on the proto for me. We could do it. Um, I'm a little hesitant to do it. We also didn't know like if anybody would want to buy this when we launched it. So there's a possibility we can do some money clip um, finish options. Max Power says, does your Tanner's Blend work as a polish also? The Tanner's Blend will not give you um, as much luster as something with more wax in it. The Tanner's Blend has no wax in it. In fact, the Tanner's Blend is all lanolin or lanolin de derivatives. It's a special blend of basically pure lanolin. And uh, it doesn't have any wax. So usually when you're talking about a leather polish, it has some wax to it. And that wax, you can sort of layer in and develop a little bit of a finish layer and it starts to look a little glassier and shinier. The Tanner's Blend doesn't do that. However, like it will give you a nice subtle sheen. To me, the Tanner's Blend luster looks like Chromexcel and it kind of looks like this. So it has like a nice sheen to it, but it's not like mirror shiny. It's subtle. It's a little bit more chilled out. Uh, I mean, these aren't polished, but the shell is like just glassy and mirror-like typically. Hopefully that helps. Uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, hey, Richard, thanks for hanging out, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, Alan Edmonds Dundee, that might be a good chuck to check out. I'm, I kind of lost, lost, I fell out of love with Alan Edmonds, but uh, I kind of peeked in on some of their, their um, like plain toe boots recently. I thought they looked really cool. I just heard kind of bad stuff about them recently, which me, makes me sad. Cause like, I like these, um, but I don't know. Randy says, oh, hey Randy. <laughs> Randy says, man, I'm going to see you guys grow. Like you have uh, good to have so much info, great products and fabulous customer service. Thanks Randy. That means a lot. And we try try really hard. Ed F says, Phil, do you think Alan Edmonds might have any chuck of shell cordovans? They do have a lot of shell style boots, just a thought. You're probably right. There you go. People are hooking me up. Thank you guys. He says, Alan Edmonds uh, used to make a Dundee, which is a chuck and shell. Because I remember I actually tried to buy my first pair of shell footwear like eight years ago. And I was going to get the same, uh, those, those Alan Edmonds, um, they have like a, a perforated toe uh, shell boots, uh, but I bought them and they're even like in a wide width, they were just so narrow and hurt me. 
I wonder if I just have gross fat feet, but uh, I couldn't get them to work. So those would have been my first shell boots. And then, you know, seven years later, I finally got my first pair. Uh, I, I was listening to the Stitch Down. The Stitch Down guys have a good podcast. And if you haven't checked it out, I really, really enjoy the Stitch Down Chew Cast, I think they call it, which is great. They made, a, in the last one I listened to, they made an incredible point, which is, like, you can have the coolest, like, if you love this, I'm kind of whatever about it. I think it's, I wish it didn't have the orange uh, welt. But if you love the way this look, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't matter. Uh, so to me, and to them, it seems like it's all about the fit. So really spend some time. Um, here's a good suggestion. Call up Grant Stone and talk to them. Say, look, I got a size 10,000 mile boots and I wear a 9.5 Berry Last for Alden and they fit great. I love them. What do you guys have? Or do that for Viber. Do it for Alan Edmonds. Get the perfect fit because to me, that seems to be what it's all about. I've tried to force cool looking stuff like the Dalton boot. I tried to force that on myself and I just hated it. Um, so that's a tough one, but it's all about the fit. I would start with fit and then go to aesthetics after that. And actually even on these, like I did that with these. I thought these Dr. J's from Converse were super cool. These are a little small on me. They're like very narrow. These are a US 10. I'm like an, a 10 and a half, 11 sometimes depending on how wide they are. And I made these work and I kind of regret it because I never really like wearing them. I just kind of liked looking at them and I wish I could wear them. Like, like I've had these for years they're like barely worn in. So it's, it's a real shame. You gotta start with a fit, I think is a good, good bit of advice. So it's Friday night. Um, I, we were just a little busy this week. I wanted to do more videos showing your wallet shipping out. I think it's a fun experience to be able to show you your stuff before you get it. I, I've always liked uh, that from like, there's a guitar company I like. <laughs> What's up, Austin? There's a guitar company I like that posts uh, photos of all the guitars they make. And when you order one, you kind of go back to their site and like look and wait till you see yours. And I, I like that experience a lot. I wanted to do that more this week, uh, but we've just been super busy from the holidays. Also today, we had a bit of a COVID scare uh, I got tested today. We have one team member that is COVID positive, um, but they have, haven't have interacted with anybody this week uh, other than Dan, who's actually off too. Uh, but Dan hasn't had any symptoms. So we got a little scared from COVID and had to change the plans a little bit, but um, still kind of hustling. So I've been trying to do more video stuff and but let me make a lame excuse. I just ran out of time. But uh, we shipped, instead of waiting to make a video, I shipped your wallets instead. So uh, hopefully that was a good call. But I want to get back into uh, sharing more of the leathers, talking about more of the leathers, sharing things like we did today with a break. I wish um, more people knew more about that. And I'd like to do a video again about some leather terminology, explaining uh, with some examples of you know, what is top grain leather, what's corrected grain leather, what's full grain leather, what's a split. And I think I can make a list of these types of things and and explain to you where people are trying to screw you and mislead you, which I see all the time. Uh, you'll see it in copywriting. If anybody ever just says the, the word top grain, I immediately know they're, they're uh, trying to sell me something uh, misleading. Um, hey, what's all right, Javier? Um, so I think I should do that more. I think just getting more information about the leathers is important. Um, and I'd like to do some more interviews. It seems like people really liked um, one of our best videos here has been the interview I did with Wyatt from Grant Stone. I've been really friendly with um, George from Oak Street. And with COVID happening, we had to, to not do it. But I'd really like to have some more interviews with people like George from Oak Street. I really like to get Skip Corwin on camera. He's so fun to talk to. I like to get my friend Nick on camera. The sales guy from Horween would be great to talk to. John Culleton has so much knowledge. Um, and for me, that's what it's all about, just like sharing uh, the knowledge with everybody about the leather so you can make a good choice. So uh, I'm going to head out here, guys. If you have any questions, 
let's have it. And then uh, Austin said, what's for dinner? Actually, my uh, we picked up some Mediterranean food. So I've got a, a chicken shawarma waiting for me over there. <laughs> yeah, getting a little hungry. Um, oh, Randy's drinking tequila. Yeah, it's Friday. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ha home and uh, drink a ton of bourbon. <laughs> Uh, Tremaine, big in ba baseballs. We actually were doing some, we were doing some baseballs today that we're behind on. It, we never really tried to offer the baseballs because they're very hard to make, especially on the shell. Um, what happens is when you, when you have the holes cut for the baseball, uh, on something like shell, Shell's not particularly strong for tensile strength. So when you're pulling and tugging the ball to form it around the, on the baseball really tight, you're pulling really hard at some leather that's been basically perforated. So it's tough for us to find like the perfect leathers for the baseballs on the shell. And they take hours for us to stitch. So we don't really think it makes sense to offer them for the price point of non cordovan because we just, the price we'd have to charge just doesn't make sense on um, something like a Chrome Excel baseball. So we've been struggling with baseballs. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it. Um, I can try for you, uh, especially because uh, you're, you've been a great supporter for us. So I can try to do it. It might take a little longer. In fact, we're struggling with that right now. We're, we're behind on baseballs because we just can't get them right. I shouldn't say that we can't get them right. It's difficult for us to get them right. And I'm not going to send you something that's crap. Um, and Austin says, can you make a tiny dog a leather vest? And yes, I can. <laughs> and we'll talk about that, Austin. And Max, Randy, Tremaine, Dark Sands, uh, Javier, Andrew, Ed, everybody. Thank you for coming. Hey, Doug West. Kick Red, Kicker Red, uh, Richard Barnes, Max Power, Adhan, AOD Han. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you uh, coming to help me with this because uh, this video would be a lot more boring without without you guys asking good questions. So I'll see you guys next time. I hope you have a good weekend. Stay healthy. Don't get COVID. See you, David. Take care, guys.